What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, behind us here is the new 2022 Nissan Rogue. As you guys may have known, I've already recently reviewed the 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander as well. And you may also know that Mitsubishi and Nissan have a partnership, meaning they share a lot of the same components, like the platform that these vehicles both ride on, also the transmission, there's the gauge cluster, infotainment screen, sound system. So quite a bit between these two vehicles are shared. So they are very similar. However, there are very substantial differences between these two as well. So ultimately in this video, we will be going over 10 key differences between the new 2022 Nissan Rogue and the 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander with a clear winner at the end. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and get started with number 10 on my list. And so first comparison on my list is going to be the pricing between these two SUVs. First off, the Mitsubishi Outlander has a starting MSRP of $26,495 for their ES trim level. Top trim of the Outlander is going to be $34,145. That's going to be the SEL Special Edition S all-wheel control version. Then, on the other side of things, for the 2022 Rogue, that's going to have a starting MSRP of $26,850 for the S trim. Rogue top trim is going to come in at $38,130 for the Platinum all-wheel drive. So, for this first comparison, Mitsubishi is going to have a lower starting price on both trim levels. So Mitsubishi is going to take a quick lead here. Let's now move on to number nine on my list. And so number nine on the list is going to be a comparison between the two warranties because they are also substantially different. Mitsubishi's warranty is going to be five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain, meaning America's best warranty. And there are some dealerships like Younger Mitsubishi in Hagerstown, Maryland that will actually double that powertrain warranty, giving you a 20 year, 200,000 mile powertrain warranty. So that is pretty darn impressive as well. Then on the other hand, Nissan's warranty is going to be the standard three year, 36 thousand mile bumper to bumper five year 60 thousand mile powertrain warranty so again Mitsubishi is going to take this win two to nothing Outlander is in the lead Next then on the list is going to be the power comparison. Mitsubishi Outlander is going to be powered by a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 181 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 181 pound feet of torque, coming in at 3,600 RPM. Zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 8.2 seconds. Then on the other side of things, 2022 Rogue is going to be powered by a brand new 1.5 liter turbocharged inline three cylinder. This is a new engine for the 2022 model year actually. 201 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 225 pound-feet of torque coming in at 2,800 RPM, zero to 60, 7.9 seconds. So Nissan does take it for power. It has a more powerful engine here, putting us at a score of two to one. Outlander is still in the lead. Next on my comparison list here is going to be the rear legroom. And so Outlander is going to come in at 39.9 inches for reference. I am even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back of the Outlander there. On the other side of things, 2022 Nissan Rogue comes in at 38.5 inches. Again, six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Quite honestly, both rear legrooms are pretty impressive. Both of those numbers are definitely perfectly fine for a six foot adult, quite honestly. They both offer heated rear seats as well, but having said that there is slightly more space in the new Outlander, so that puts us at a score three to one. Outlander is in the lead. Next on the comparison list here is going to be fuel economy. And so Outlander is going to come in at 24 in the city, 31 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 24 city, 30 MPGs on the highway for the all wheel drive, taking regular unleaded fuel. So that is definitely nice. On the other side of things, Nissan Rogue comes in at 30 in the city, 37 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 28 city, 34 then on the highway for the all wheel drive. Very impressive there because of that new engine. Fuel economy has definitely benefited for the better with the new Nissan Rogue. Also though, taking regular unleaded fuel. So once again, very good there. Substantial difference between the two. And obviously Rogue is going to take this win, putting us at a score of three to two. Outlander is slightly in the lead. Number five on the comparison list here is going to be cargo space. Mitsubishi Outlander comes in at 33.5 cubic feet behind that second row. Then with that second row folded down, there is a 40-20-40 split that is going to bump that up to 79.7 cubic feet. So very impressive there, actually. On the other hand, Nissan Rogue comes in at 36.8 cubic feet behind that second row. With that second row folded down, there is a 60-40 split that is going to bump that up to 72 cubic feet. So 
Outlander once again is going to be slightly larger, so it is going to take the win there, putting us at a score of four to two. Outlander is in the lead. Next then on our list, number four is going to be the third row legroom. And so Outlander is going to come in at 18.7 inches, which quite honestly isn't a heck of a lot. But I will say if this second row does have the ability to slide up a little bit, if you were to do that, this could allow the third row to be used by possibly a small child. So I'll put it that way. But when it comes to the Nissan Rogue, there is no third row, unfortunately. So again, a very substantial difference between these two SUVs. The Outlander comes with a third row and the Rogue does not, unfortunately. So that does put us at a score of five to two. Mitsubishi Outlander is in the lead. Next on my list is going to be the Country of Assembly. And I will say as a disclaimer, no points will be given either way here because obviously having the vehicle assembled in one country versus another isn't really a big deal, but to some people, it does matter, so I did want to reference it here because there is a clear difference. Mitsubishi Outlander is going to be made 89% made in Japan, with the final assembly point being in Akazaki, Japan. However, with the 2022 Rogue, 40% is going to be made in Japan, 30% using U.S. and Canadian parts, with the final assembly point being in Smyrna, Tennessee, so here in the U.S. So again, very substantial difference. If you prefer U.S. made vehicles, maybe the Rogue is going to be better. If you're more on the lines of JDM, perhaps the Mitsubishi Outlander is going to be better for you but ultimately again no points are going to be awarded here so still Outlander is in the lead five to two next on our comparison list is going to be the all-wheel drive system again a very substantial difference between these two Mitsubishi Outlander is actually using an all-wheel control system is what they call it which actually is not an all-wheel drive system but rather a four-wheel drive system and this was originally developed for the Lancer Evo 7 which was bred for rally racing aka racing on the dirt and snow so it was certainly made for plenty of traction in those conditions and it focuses on the control of the balance between the wheels it focuses on controlling the handling then as well so it's a race inspired four-wheel drive system in the dirt and snow on the other hand the nissan rogue does come with an all-wheel drive system and so this is going to be typically what you find on most suvs out there it's an intelligent all-wheel drive system so naturally it's front wheel drive vehicle and then when it detects any kind of slip it sends power to the rear wheels as well giving you that all-wheel drive system so that's going to help out with mpgs as well which is maybe part of the reason why the rogue has better fuel economy but i will say if you are looking for better traction the mitsubishi outlander is going to have the better all-wheel drive slash four-wheel drive system being as it was originally bred for rally racing aka racing on the dirt and snow which puts us at a score of six to two outlander is in the lead Next and very lastly on my list is going to be reliability. And again, this is going to be according to Consumer Reports as I always reference because they're a neutral third party that doesn't actually take any money or handouts from any manufacturer. So both of these vehicles actually scored an average reliability rating. So essentially the way these ratings work is you have well below average, below average, average reliability, and then you have above average and well above average. So that's how it works. So it's pretty much middle of the pack there. However, I will say that was for the 2021 model and the Rogue has a new turbocharged three cylinder which has not yet been tested. So who knows if that is going to be reliable or not. It could be one of the most reliable engines in history. However, typically from what history shows us, turbocharged engines are typically less reliable than their naturally aspirated and even direct injected counterparts. So having said that, if we're going off of history, although none of these statistics are out yet, I would have to give this win to the Outlander because it uses a naturally aspirated four cylinder. So having said that, that puts us at a score of 72. Mitsubishi Outlander is going to take the win. However, having said that, both are very nice SUVs. And while the Outlander may have won my personal comparison, that doesn't necessarily mean that is the right SUV for you. For example, if you have a long commute to work and you want a better MPGs, the Rogue is going to be the clear winner for you because that gives you incredible miles per gallon, especially considering it's in a decent size SUV like the Rogue. So if you also, if you wanted a slightly quicker acceleration, if you have to do a lot of merging onto on-ramps, perhaps the Rogue is a bit quicker than the Outlander as well. So anyways, let me know which one you guys would pick in the comment section below. And so but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you want to see what's coming next on the channel, before it actually gets to YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel after all. I do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.